Because the conventional dry eye can be confused with cholesis induced dry eye, it is important clinically to make a clear differential diagnosis. In my experience, the patient complaint dry eye is refractory to conventional treatments such as punctal occlusion or topical use of restasis. Kanyantaiva cholesis is invariably uh, being the underlying cause, therefore it should be strongly suspected. This important slide demonstrates how we should uh, make the clinical diagnosis and differential diagnosis between these two entities. The traditional dry eye caused by aqueous tear deficiency will have dry eye symptoms that tend to be worse as the day go in the afternoon. And uh, this particular complaint can be worse when the patient is looking straight or up, uh, doing computer work or watching TV. And this uh, symptoms can be improved when the blinking is increased, which shorten the interblinked interval and reducing the exposure time. And uh, the patients are uh, Kandyantaiva hemorrhage C3 was infrequently observed. In contrast, the patient complained the cholesis induced dry eye. The symptoms of dryness and irritation tend to be uh, the same throughout the day. And this complaint tend to be uh, worsened when the patient is looking down, doing reading, or playing cards, or, or, or golf. The uh, the symptoms of uh, dryness or irritation cannot be improved by blinking. On the contrary, tend to be worsened by the vigorously blinking, as I will demonstrate you uh, in later. And uh, the patient tend to have uh, intermittent, recurrent subcanyantaiva hemorrhage. The first instinct, uh, if positive, showing superficial punctic keratopathy tend to be decorated in the interpalpebral exposure zone in conventional dry eye, and yet this pattern would, uh, would change to include it in the non-exposure zone, and this pattern can help and be helpful, and I will demonstrate to you later. Tear occurrence, as I said, can be, uh, can be delayed in the patient with severe dry eye, but not in the uh, uh, mild aqueous tear deficiency but frequently delayed tear occurrence is present in the patients with Kanyantaiva cholesis. Rose Bengal staining uh, should be similar in the exposure zone in conventional dry eye, and yet the Rose Bengal staining will be in the lid margin and non-exposure zone, as I will show you a little bit later. Punctal occlusion is the main state of treatment for conventional aqueous tear deficiency, and yet punctal occlusion uh, sometimes can make the symptoms or worse in the patients with cholesis induced dry eye. One good way to demonstrate uh, cholesis induced dry eye and the presence of Kanyantaiva cholesis is to use the first thing. First thing will be decorated in the tear meniscus as shown here, but this tear meniscus become discontinuous and interrupted and even obliterated by the redundant conjunctiva as demonstrated by the arrows in these eyes. And this can be even more exaggerated in the severe cholesis where the wrinkle can be visualized in the bulbal conjunctiva, particularly in the area where the lid margin is uh, located. Using this technique, uh, one can appreciate a, a continuous tear meniscus in, in the normal eye, and this tear meniscus being continuous can also be observed even in patients with pure aqueous tear deficiency, although this tear meniscus is significantly narrower and lower. And this pattern can be appreciated in patients with uh, conjunctival cholesis, even in the presence of aqueous tear deficiency, where the tear meniscus is interrupted or obliterated, as shown in the slides. As you can see, when the cholesis becomes severe, as shown here, 
、uh, the calyces is distributed at the six o'clock position. The tear meniscus is frequently becomes、uh, deficient and unstable on the cornea surface. The patient will complain of blurry vision, and this redundant conjunctiva will further、uh, disturb the tear、uh, meniscus and then cause more distinct signs, as I will show you later. One particular sign can be detected by rose bengal staining. Rose bengal staining will decorate the exposed conjunctiva. In this case, the redundant conjunctiva surface is shown by yellow on the left upper corner. This rose bengal staining can also be found on the lid margin, where the tear meniscus was not was absent, and leading to the conjunctiva tarsal conjunctiva dryness. And this rose bengal staining can be found on the lid margin and also on the conjunctiva just above the lid margin. This rose bengal staining will then distribute it to the inferior bulbar conjunctiva when the lower lid is、uh, is pulled down. Therefore, the rose bengal staining in the conjunctiva calyces induced dry eye tend to distribute it at the lid margin. The conjunctiva adjacent to the margin or below the lid margin in the in the unexposure zone. This non-exposure zone staining is typical of、uh, conjunctiva calyces induced dry eye, as illustrated in the、uh, two slides in the lower panel, which is very different from the exposure zone staining pattern. Distributed between the lid fissure or interpapillary zone, and are commonly observed in aqueous tear deficiency dry eye. It is also important to distinguish conjunctiva calyces from traditional、uh, perforators. This is because the redundant conjunctiva, as shown in this case, in the temporal bulbar. Uh, area can allow the aqueous tear fluid to overflow or overspill onto the lid skin. This will then induce the anterior migration of the mucocutaneous junction, as illustrated here by the forcing staining. This region would become inflamed, and therefore regional perforators can be caused. By conjunctiva calyces and should be distinguished. Due to the wrinkled tissue, the tear film will have a hard time to be distributed from the tear meniscus onto the bulbar conjunctiva. Therefore, conjunctiva calyces can also cause conjunctiva inflammation or conjunctivitis. And depending on the severity of the disease, the inflamed region can be regional, just above the lid margin in mild cases, but can become、uh, more diffuse, distributing to the entire bulbar conjunctiva in moderate and severe conjunctival calyces. And therefore, it is important to look for conjunctival calyces in the patient with conjunctivitis.